Patel, and this is my creative critical reflection for one of our recently filmed movies called Lonely Laughter. Now, the setting of this film is basically at the fair, which is intended to be a very fun, bright, happy setting, right? But when we actually go to watch the film, we realize that it's not just all sunshine and rainbows, right? There are so many layers and so much depth that we go to uncover in this, um, in, the, in the two minutes of this film clip. Now, the conventions that we off, that we challenge in this film are basically dedicated to all the mental challenges that children face, right? Um, and the key word is children there. So the, the mental trials and tribulations that children face are often brushed away by society. Mental health problems associated with feelings of loneliness are often rarely addressed with younger children, mainly because they're not at the age to fully express their thoughts. This film basically aims to bring light to all the mental struggles children face daily while having to put up with the persona of false happiness in front of their loved ones. We never really recognize children as having these issues, but again, uh, when we go to uncover it, we realize that there's a much deeper issue there that we that we can't even see from the outside, right? The social issues that we uncovered is that children face too many inner demons but lack the same kind of support adults receive when dealing with mental health issues. This film is obviously not intended for children despite being set in a children-friendly environment. Instead, it's more um, meant for adults who have gone too long without fully addressing their child's mental well-being. Now, when we talk about engagement, um, I myself as a film enthusiast, I've seen lots of film openings, so there's one key aspect that I pick up in everything, and it's that uh, the film, the first two minutes of the film, I know whether I'm going to like the film or whether I'm not going to like the film. And that's because of the suspense and the anticipation that's being built in those two minutes. So when making this film open, opening, the one goal we kept in mind was to leave the audience on the edge of their seats. We wanted them craving more, right? The opening intentionally doesn't reveal too much about the plot or the characters other than the fact that the film is at the fair. This element of suspense kind of helps the audience remain entertained and engaged as they look forward to the events that will unfold. Again, um, this kind of challenges the normal idea of a fun fair movie, right? As we've seen in the past. Um, and instead, it's much deeper and it's much more thorough than what uh, the audience might think in the beginning. This film will, will be distributed online to make it easy and it will be free of cost. The goal of producing this movie is not to make large profits out of it, but instead it's about to educate the public on a critical social issue while also being entertaining and somewhat horrifying. Now, um, when we go to talk about our production skills, right? In the beginning of this film, um, we had a little bit knowledge about how to film a movie, right? Um, and it's all due, it's all accredited because of all the past assignments and all the past things that we've worked on in this class. We already had some limited experience with planning, filming, and editing short films, but this was the first project we undertook that was this extensive, right? We came in with a general idea of what producing a film requires, but this project really refined many of the skills that we picked up throughout the year. So the first step to this project was kind of storyboarding, right? And kind of figuring out um, where each scenes will take place, how we're going to film them, and not only film them, but how we're going to film them that says a story, right? And then the second part was actually figuring out the frame sizes and making sure that each scene that we filmed was visually interesting, which is one of the hardest parts because I myself have never been to a fair, so I, you know, I have little knowledge about what there is at the fair um, and how we're going to be able to kind of carry through this project. Another challenge that we filmed was kind of filming in such a loud, bustling environment with many unpredictable factors to work with like sunlight and crowds. And another challenge that we didn't expect to face was directing the child's acting. Um, this was something that we hadn't even thought, thought about because it's not something that we typically work with in this class. But again, this was a challenge that we had, kind, of had to un kind of had to undertake and um, go through. And then the last part of this was kind of editing and this for me was the most tedious part because you know you can film beautiful scenes and sh shots but if you're not going to uh, assemble them properly it's not going to say the message you want to be delivered right and so editing was actually a very 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 tough challenge for me especially because um, I'm not really well versed in this so this was a challenge that you know I had to kind of go through with the help of my teacher and with the help of my um, partner. Now, when we talk about integrating technologies and softwares online, uh, we kind of knew about the basic ones like Move Fusion, but as we progressed on in editing, we realized that we kind of needed something a little bit more. So we actually 
um, used Adobe Adobe Premiere Pro for some of the titles and musics and transitions. And also, uh, we had a very specific idea in mind for how our title sh should appear on the screen. And working on the Premiere Pro allowed us to make it more visually interesting and realistic titles, which is something that uh, we were not able to carry out in Luma Fusion. Another was kind of adjusting the music to be slowed down during specific moments, which added an extra layer of depth to our film, which again, we were able to do through Luma Fusion. Now, when we were picking the music for our clip, ideally we wanted to be a little bit um, eerie, but when we were talking with our teacher, we realized that it's actually more uh, creepy, I guess, in a way, if we do like a normal song or a normal happy song, but instead have like moments that are creep creepy, right? And so we did this through making the bass slower, making it slower, and also by just changing what the audience sees on the screen. Mixing in additional sound effects like the static noise and the visual effects like the high contrast scenes with pixelation were additional edits done through Luma Fusion. Uh, we filmed this entire movie on an iPhone 15 Pro and we used a DJI gimbal and all the shots were filmed using cinematic mode on the iPhone and most shots involved the gimbal for extra stabilization and support. Thank you everyone for listening to my Creative Critical Reflection.